Hello everyone, Amaze Penguin here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I set up the AI for my Type 7C U-Boat replica. At the end of this video, you should be able to implement this AI system into your own attack submarines. First, let's make the distinction that this AI is meant for submersible boats. This means that the ship is only underwater during combat, and it's on the surface at any other time. This AI would have to be modified for a submarine, or a ship that is underwater for most of its uh, primary function. The other primary distinction is that this AI would point the submarine directly at an enemy and then close the distance instead of just circling an enemy and firing missiles. So first, let's take a look at the mainframe. You'll see that the only AI card that we have installed on this mainframe is the circling ship card. Let's take a look at how to set it up. Feel free to pause the video at any moment to look at these settings. For the circle at distance card, we have a combat distance of 1000, combat altitude of 0, and a minimum approach angle of 0. We also have a maximum roll of target to 2 degrees, a roll to azimuth of 15, no upwards or downwards elevation offsets, and all of this doesn't matter in the end. And we also want to set it to ignore altitude and use both sides of the ship, so we can point either side of the ship. This is actually going to be the part of our AI that tells it to run away from an enemy. Second, you'll see the other uh, behavior we have on this mainframe is the bombing run AI. You want to set it up like so. We're going to pitch to the target of zero meters, break off of distance of one meter, we're going to re-engage after 1500 meters, a re-engage time of 120 seconds, uh, abort time start distance of 0 meters, abort time of 20 seconds, and a combat altitude of negative 20 meters. And this is going to be relative to sea level. Under adjustments, we also want to make sure that our pathfinding is on water, avoiding all vehicles. We don't want to be above land, and we want to have a minimum altitude above water of 70, negative 75 meters. We also want to make sure that we have a 10 meter depth of water required, and for this one I set my turning circle to 100 meters. We want to allow upwind pathfinding because we aren't a sailing ship, and we also want to make sure to disallow reverse. This will prevent our ship from going backwards, which we don't really want because we want our ship to go straight at the enemy and keep going straight without turning or backing up. Next, under the maneuver tab, these settings, I do not believe they're very important. This is just how I set them up. We don't have anything under additional. We don't have any PID control. And we don't have any of this control as well. Now that we got the mainframe set up, the next thing we're going to look at is our PID. This is going to control our altitude. So at the moment, our input's going to be the altitude above mean sea level. This is going to be controlled by the air pump fraction control. We want the type to be PID, and we want to enable a set fake set point. So this fake set point, we can arbitrarily put in any number at this moment because the ACBs that we have set up are going to change this automatically based on whether there's an enemy or not. The gain, integral time, and derivative time, you don't need to mess with that at this point. I've found that it hasn't, uh, I haven't needed to change those for this system to work. You want to use your tools from the avatar skills to be able to name a block. You're going to want to name this PID that we just set up to altitude or ALT in this case. It's very important because that's how we're going to have the ACBs talk to this PID. So now the first ACB we want to set up is if there's no enemy. So simply put, if there's no enemy within 0 meters of our ship or within 3000 meters of our ship, we're going to set the general purpose PID's fake point to 10,000. This means that we're going to tell that PID to try to achieve an altitude of 10,000. Now. It can't do that because it's a boat and it can't fly, but it's going to set all the air pumps on the ship to 100%. If we set it to just go to an altitude of zero, not all the air pumps would go to 100%, and therefore the ship might not be fully surfaced. And when you're setting this up, you also want to make sure that it's searching specifically for the altitude PID. And that way you don't have to change the effect range if you have other PIDs on your ship. 
Now, the second, PI, the second ACB we're going to set up goes like this. If there's an enemy within that 3,000 meters to that 800 meter mark, we're going to set our PID's fake altitude point to negative 10 meters. This is going to be just low enough that we can be under the water but still have our periscope up. In this case, we do have a periscope on this ship, as you can see by this rod here on a piston. And it deploys automatically when our ship submerges. It's just for decoration, but it's a cool feature you can add. If they have a mod that makes the camera smaller, maybe we can put that on top of it at some point. And again, you want to make sure that it's specifically searching for the altitude PID. So the next set of ranges is now going to be at our attack depth. So this means we've sighted our enemy and now we're going to go below periscope depth. We're going to retract our periscope and begin our attack run. So this is set up by this ACB. So if they're within that 800 meters, but it's still further than 450 meters away, we're just going to increase the depth to negative 30 meters. And again, make sure that we're setting it to be controlled by or to search for the altitude PID. Lastly, we'll need a ACB to control what happens when there is an enemy within that 450 meter mark and zero meters. And this is what we're gonna set. We're gonna set it to negative 50 meters. This is the range when a destroyer, if it was hunting us, would be launching depth charges. So we wanna send the ship as low as possible to the crush depth to try and avoid those depth charges. So, set up like all the rest, just come down and make sure you search for the altitude PID. I do have a second PID here right now, but it doesn't actually do anything. But if it did do something at this moment, that's why we're searching specifically just for the altitude PID. So it only affects this one. So next up we got two more ACBs, and these are going to control the mainframe's AI selection. So, we'll have one that says if there's an enemy within 1,000 meters and 5,000 meters, we're gonna set the mainframe's AI to the bombing run AI. You don't have to set a specific search pattern because we only have the one AI on this ship. So whenever an enemy spawns, it's automatically gonna switch the AI behavior to the bombing run, meaning that it's going to point directly at the enemy and charge them. Now, we set up the second ACB so that once we're within 100 meters of that enemy vessel, we're going to switch to the circle at distance. This will have the ship turn around and run away from the enemy ship until it gets outside of the engagement range, which we had set earlier on that AI card. Now I have two more ACBs back here, but they're purely for the periscope, so these are setting the periscope piston extension based on the depth. So here you can see if we're between negative six meters depth and negative 15 meters depth to extend it to 100%. Otherwise, we're gonna set it to 0% extension. At this point in time, it's important to make sure if you have torpedoes to set them up to engage only enemies that were within the proper altitude bracket. Now due to FTD's new and improved uh, weapons controller, there has to be a 50 meter gap in between your minimum and maximum altitude engagement. So I like to set it to negative 25 and 25 meters. This is because sometimes even though a ship is on the water, it still reads as an altitude above water. So you don't want to be too precise when you're setting this. This gives it a good range that it'll always fire at ships that are on the water. So let's give it a quick test. Let's put it on an enemy ship let's go in and we're gonna put in a Jacob's falling that should do it so automatically you see our ship start sinking and let's go ahead and select a behavior if we selected the circling ship behavior that's fine it'll eventually change it but you see the periscope has automatically extended on its own now you see that we are outside our minimum engagement range so it has switched back to the bombing run AI and it's turning towards the enemy ship. We're now descending to our attack depth so the periscope has gone down.
And now that we're pointing at the enemy ship, there go the torpedoes. And we can view this from our first person camera here with this screen that I put in our cockpit. There's some return fire going on there. Nothing to worry about though. Looks like we've uh, increased in altitude some so the periscopes come back up, but direct hits. There you go. Now we are properly descending as we're getting even closer to our enemy now. You can see the torpedoes coming in. Big hits. And we've sunk the enemy. A little bit early, I imagine. Let's just see where our ship comes up, though. Oh, there it is, coming up now. All automatically. And now that it's surfaced, the periscope retracts. Just like it was planned. So there you go. Um, fortunately, the enemy died too quickly to show that. Once it gets right underneath it, it will automatically turn around and start a second attack run. But that's all you need to know, really, to set up your submarine. So I hope this helped you guys. If you liked it, leave a like, uh, follow my channels, and I'll have more content for you in the future. Thanks for watching.